something like uh, a new billet pulley for your lathe. We're one degree away from the beginning. And I've ran some trial prints of this part that were hollow just to see if I could print it. And I, oh, I usually have a couple of failures each time I try a new, more complicated project. So I'm glad I uh, did those trial prints. And what you're going to see here is my solid print, which this is, uh, if the print comes out well, this will be the pulley I send to Evil Twin. The plastic is ABS, which is uh, very tough. Most 3D printers print in a plastic called PLA, which is made from corn, and um, it's very brittle, so it's not really suitable for mechanical parts. ABS is very suitable for mechanical parts. It has some difficulties in that it wants to shrink uh, very easily. And I think after I cleaned the bed, I forgot to put glue on the bed. This is just uh, stick glue. There's some other ways of making the bed sticky. For instance, they will use uh, acetone to dissolve some ABS and put that on the print bed. Got to lower it down so I can get the glue stick under those rods. Just spinning the lead screw by hand. And this has a lead screw just like a lathe or a milling machine has a lead screw. Just has a thing called a stepper motor that lets the computer control the lead screw and run it. I haven't mentioned it yet, but when I get my manual machine shop going, I will probably uh, start working on a uh, CNC shop. Now we're going to hit print. We'll have to wait for the uh, temperatures to come back up. The bed got back down to 95. That'll take a couple of minutes. We'll come back and watch the beginning of the print. While this unit's warming back up again, we'll talk about a couple of the things that I have in here. Labels, raise and lower. This is which way to turn these dials in order to raise or lower the bed. That's kind of confusing, and uh, I, so I went ahead and made a, uh, a label to state what that was. There's three points here so that we can uh, tilt the bed and get it level. It's very important that it's level. Since I'm new to uh, 3D printing and CNC machines in general, I've marked the axes down here. This is the Y axis. Up and down is the Z axis. And fr front to back is the Y axis. And which way is minus and plus? Plus is up, minus is down. I'm sorry, minus is up, plus is down. Plus is to the left on the Y, minus is to the right on the Y. And when you're looking at the G code, which you don't really need to under understand G code to run one of these, but when you're looking at the G code and you see um, which way the numbers are going, you can tell which way it's commanding the uh, print head to move. And one of the things that I've been working on is getting the printer to run the print head back and forth across these two uh, stainless steel strips, which scrapes off of the tip of the printer any plastic that might be hanging there. And uh, I need to get back and finish uh, playing around with the numbers. There's a little wiggle code that I have in there that wiggles it back and forth across these and you'll see that I'm scraping across this one properly but not this one. I'm missing it by uh, maybe uh, 5 to 10 uh, millimeters. Now the original software that came in this printer or should I say firmware in the printer and software that drove it from your computer um, all of that stuff was pre-programmed but you couldn't make a lot of changes to how the how the printer worked. You couldn't change temperatures and couldn't go to PLA and other plastics and and um, when you hack these and put a uh, repeteer on them you can change all the settings. But the uh, drawback of that is you need to know what all those settings do. So it took me a couple of weeks to get it producing good parts again after I did that. 
the head is heating up, there's a certain order this goes in. When I showed you the order last time, I had manually turned on the uh, extruder head heat and the bed heat because I knew I was getting ready to print something and so I was starting to heat it up in advance. Um, but the order of steps is it heats the bed, then it homes the bed, which is raising it up, and cleans the uh, extruder, and then it turns on the heater to the uh, extruder and runs the temperature up. And it goes very quickly, as you can see, 197, 198, 199, 200, 204, at 235, it'll, she'll start printing. And we'll be able to see what it does. Now, I don't have a uh, time-lapse camera, so I'm not going to be able to show you the entire print. But I do like to watch it print until it gets the first layer done before I uh, walk away from the machine. Because if you're going to have an error with something that's not sticking to the table, it'll be the first uh, layer usually. Now this is a line that it prints around the area it's going to print on, and this is just to get the plastic flowing. And I can see on the back of that line it's a little bit pink because we had red in there. What it's making up front here is one of the halves of the small pulley, the two inch pulley. And there's holes that go all the way through it, so it's of course not putting any plastic in the hole. But it's filling in all the rest of the areas. And you noticed it runs a little slower. That those outside layers it prints a little slower, which makes them a little uh, nicer when it's done. Actually, it's at full speed. It should slow down in a second here and do the last outside layer. If I understand my settings correctly. Well, maybe not. filling in all the spaces that don't have plastic in them now. There we go, I've repositioned the camera so you have a better view of what's going on. And we can watch it build the outside surface. This is the large diameter surface. And the other half of the two inch pulley. all before was an exterior layer. That circle's an exterior layer. So that's slower. At least I believe that to be the case. So we've gone on to our second layers now, so I'm going to stop uh, recording and we'll check it out in the morning. We're in the shop on Monday morning. And I haven't looked yet. I want to see how my print worked out. There we are. I see what looks like good parts. Let's put some light on the subject. And we can see after the bed cools down stuff comes loose very easily. It's already all broke loose. So let's examine what we have here. What you're seeing there is just kind of a sheen. 
had a little bit of peeling right here a little bit of a low spot this looks like a good usable part a lot heavier than the first one I printed cool so now I have to print the other side of this so here is the two pieces that makes up a small pulley and these will mount like so still have to print the other side of this we'll get that print started and see how it comes out and maybe by tonight we'll be building a pulley Load side B. Get her sliced up with slicer. Three hours and twenty two minutes. Begin. twin this is the last part a little bit stuck ooh that's interesting this side doesn't appear to be finished exactly properly I've got this uh, extra layer around the rim here We'll have to check it out and see if it works anyways. I may have a little flaw in my drawing. Hopefully this is a complete enough to send. It, it printed the proper amount of time. Hope I don't have to print it again. So these objects fit together like so. These are through holes in both pieces. These are through holes in one half of this and thread holes in the other. And these require drilling to get to the exact right diameter. The small pulley, let's see if I can line this up right. This, around this outside diameter of the big pulley will be the button heads. Um, of the fasteners, and this is on the outside of the motor by the way when it's set up properly. There'll be button head fasteners around this, the heads of fasteners, and they will pass through this surface here and thread into this half of the uh, small pulley. And then the other half of the small pulley sits on here. And fasteners that fit through here connect this half of the pulley just into the rim right here. They thread in here. So it'll be more obvious when you get the pieces all together. And uh, this will be 
a temporary replacement pulley for your Atlas uh, TH42 or is it a 54 uh, lathe restoration and this should work long enough so that you can uh, manufacture your own pulley out of billet aluminum which I expect you'll want to do. I don't expect a plastic pulley to survive a belt slippage and I've stalled my lathe a couple of times and this is where the belt has slipped. You mostly use this small pulley for most of your turning and I would expect that slippage would melt a plastic pulley but I think if you're careful you can use this probably for a little while and your first project probably ought to be look something like uh, a new billet pulley for your lathe so this is uh, Dave with the Crafted Channel this came off of my 3D printer it's an XYZ printing 1.0 that's been hacked to Repetier uh, firmware and I'm driving it with Repetier software on the computer I really love this printer it's taken me a little while to get it printing good mostly related to the fact that I didn't know much about 3D printing but I can make nice parts now and I'm really having a good time making functional things on the 3D printer